Have you ever thought to yourself, you know what, I really like this particular typeface, but I just wish it was a little bit grungier, a little bit dirtier, a little bit more grit. Let's rub some dirt into it. Maybe that's just me. I've been experimenting with different ways about how to dirty up a typeface. Let's say to maybe make a t-shirt graphic or a logo. I wanted to share that with you. Let's go! What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Conrad. I'm an artist and designer and today we're getting dirty. Don't worry, you don't need to put the kids to bed for this one, I promise. Coffee. Yeah, it's five o'clock in the evening and I'm still drinking coffee, so what? Before I continue, I just want to give a quick shout out to all my Patreon subscribers. I just want to say, guys, if you're paying attention, if you're watching, thank you. I love you. You rock. If you don't know anything about my Patreon, hey, there's a link in the description. Go check it out. Into the screen. So you can see here on the screen, I've got the word hero written out. I don't know why this particular word. It was just the word I decided to put. Seems like a good word. You could put it on a t-shirt. People would be like, hey, what does that mean? Like, I don't know. It's a good word though. People like that word. It seems like a nice word to use. Let's use this word. And if you come up here into the corner, Din Condensed. Din is actually one of my secondary favorites as far as sans serif typefaces. And I really like the condensed typeface, especially when I'm trying to squeeze a lot of letters into a small space and still make it look nice. The beauty of this is that I'm going to dirty this typeface up, but I am going to be non-destructive about it. And so you can change the typeface out however you want. In fact, we'll do a little bit of that later on so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I didn't happen to mention before, this is all done in Affinity Photo. People don't like to necessarily design logos in Affinity Photo. I do it all the time. I don't care. Vector can be overrated sometimes, especially when you're trying to get a little bit gritty and dirty and grungy. You, can't, you just can't get the same kind of dirt and grunge in designer, you just can't. I like it dirty, what can I say? Don't make it weird. Now before we begin, I wanna make sure you understand I need to include a fill layer at the very bottom. This needs to be uh, some sort of color, it doesn't have to be white, I'm using white just for the contrast. There has to be that fill layer and I'll show you why later, but it's because the effects don't really take the effect the right way unless there's something behind it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two live filter layers. I'm gonna go to blur, I'm gonna add Gaussian blur. I'm just gonna leave it right there, close that because we'll fix it later. Then I'm gonna do it again, but I'm, this time I'm gonna go to Distort and Displace. Then the last one, I'm going to go down to my Adjustments, scroll down to Threshold. Oh, and also I wanna make sure that I drag this Displacement layer into, or rather underneath, the Typeface layer, because I need these two inside here for this to work. Threshold has to stay out on top because it just doesn't work right if I don't have it there. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my Gaussian Blur Live Filter, and I'm just gonna blur this sucker out. Let me turn my threshold off for a second so you can see exactly what's happening here. So I'm turning the Gaussian blur up pretty high till it's almost, well, it's not illegible, but it's pretty hard to read. At least if this was small, you wouldn't wanna read it like that. But then if I go back and turn my threshold on, it immediately starts doing that. And of course I can adjust that as needed. Maybe I want it to kind of have this uh, kind of amoebic effect, effect here. But what's really gonna set this apart is if I go into my displacement layer and I load a layer I believe it was 17, no. I want something that has a lot of contrast and has a very organic feel. So this is actually number 13 from my stain texture back link in the description. Anyway, so I'm gonna choose that one. I'm gonna click okay or click open. I'm also, let me put this up here, make sure it has scale to fit. Now it's, it's up to you, you can play with this, you can play with all these settings, but as soon as I do this, watch what starts to happen. It starts to get pretty kind of, you know, just grungy and cool. I can unscale it to fit and that actually kind of creates some interesting more dynamic range. What happens with scale to fit is it takes that larger images and basically fits it within the borders of this particular frame that we've got going on here and if I don't have it scaled to fit then it's larger and so that's why when I have it scaled to fit the dots or lines or grungy parts are much smaller. But if I do it like that then it's a little bit bigger and a little bit grungier. Now here's the thing. Zero point is basically nothing, right? But if you go negative, you're leaning more into the, the shadows of that image. And if you go positive, then you're leaning more into the highlights of that image. It kind of looks the same, but if you look really closely, it's slightly different depending on which direction you go. Play with it both directions and see what suits you. The one thing I wish I could do here, which, you know, it wouldn't be too tough. I would just have to go and change, make a new image and kind of turn it around, but I wish I could tilt it. I wish I could tilt it and turn it or something like that, but you can't. And I guess I could technically, I could probably, let's try something. This is new, I'm gonna try this. I could turn that, oh, look at that. So I could turn the typeface itself, and then once I finally finished my image at the end, I could turn it back if I wanted to. That's not really doing much for me at this point, but there might be other uh, displacement maps that might do that. In fact, I'm gonna show you another one. I have a new glitch pack coming out soon. It's called Glitchomatic. 
I'm not finished with this yet, but let me just pull one out of here. So if I do this one, you can see it's a little bit more linear. But if I turn that typeface, then those lines become less linear to the typeface. And then once I solidify everything and then turn it, then those lines are gonna be, you know, not linear. If I don't quite like what's happening, I can go in here and make some adjustments to my threshold, make some adjustments to my Gaussian blur. Now the threshold, what it's doing is it's eliminating all the gray. So the more that I add to my Gaussian blur, the thinner that's gonna go because it's removing all of that grayness that's happening. And of course it goes the other direction too, it goes back to normal. So if I wanted to, let's say, do it like super thin, something crazy like that, and you can't really quite tell what's happening there, but you still kind of read it, I can do that. And then if I go up here into my threshold, I can play with that and I can go beefier or lighter, right? I can do that. Let's go back in here and adjust my Gaussian blur. And then of course, just like I was saying, you can come in here with your type tool. Let's change it to Helvetica. That's weird, right? So we gotta go in here and, okay, we need to make some adjustments. We need to pull this back down, actually pull it up. Maybe pull my Gaussian blur down. Maybe what I wanna do is make my letters a little different and then I can bring them like that. I'm with it, changing it with key commands to adjust the kerning. Maybe I want to change this to a zero. Let's go into my glyphs. Let's see, find glyphs. Let's see if I can find that zero with a uh, line through it. Scroll down, scroll down. Did I get to the, anything that looks like a, no? Oh, I got a bunch of Cyrillic. Ooh, look at that one. What if I did that? No, that didn't work. <laughs> that doesn't work, Dave. Look at that. Now that's a little big, but we can also reduce that down. And we can also adjust the kerning. And maybe that E is a little too big. And maybe I also want to make some adjustments like, let's say, let's raise it up here a little bit, like that. Maybe make it look weird. And I don't know if this works or not, I'm just playing around. And maybe I uh, do the cardinal sin of italicizing my own typeface. And then we do want to, it's, we do want to turn it on the, a little bit on an angle like that. Now it looks like here instead of hero, that didn't work. So, okay, back to zero, there we go. Create a little bit of difference there so people don't think it's something else. But if you don't like that typeface, choose something else. I've got this one, the Flyer Fonts, is one of my favorite typefaces. It's got some really crazy stuff going on here. And let's, uh, the displacement's looking pretty thick. So I'm gonna go back to scale to fit. I mean, this is punk rock as it gets right here. Any one of these typefaces would look pretty cool. And you would make some adjustments. That one looks pretty good, just like that. I'd wear that on a t-shirt. If I didn't have that, that fill layer on there, you can see that it doesn't quite work perfectly. It's working better than I have seen it, but you can still see quite a bit of the gray in there without that white fill layer. Or if I move this threshold into the group here, it basically just goes away, right? It's not even, like it doesn't even hardly exist. So the threshold has to be up there, the white fill layer has to be down there, and if I want to do something with this and make this like its own logo, like its own standalone thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all the layers and I do that by doing Command Option Shift, and it's probably Control Alt Shift, and then E. I'm gonna just group these real quick and make them invisible. And then I'm gonna take this, select sample color. I'm gonna select the white, and I'm gonna bring it all the way up, or pretty close to all the way up. I'm just gonna hit Delete. As you can't really tell because it's on that white background. Let's uh, well, I mean, it's there. It's there. Transparent background. You can see. I don't know if you can see that. It, sometimes that doesn't show up in the video for whatever reason. But there's a transparent background back there. And now, if I want to colorize this, I could do this a couple ways. Let's find a brush. Make this red. Increase my brush size. Whoa. Oh, I've got my. Uh, I was like, why is it doing that? I forgot. I still had my stabilizer on. I could add a gradient to it. Actually, a better way to do gradient would be to go here, gradient overlay, onto the effects panel. Click. Gradient overlay, change my color to, let's say, come on, give me, oh, click the wrong spot. God, old habits from Adobe. Click that one, change that color to blue. So you can do all kinds of stuff with that. And again, I still have this layer here that has not been destroyed. It's non-destructive. You can play with this to your heart's content. In fact, what you might even want to do is if you think this technique is something you would use on a regular basis, either make it as a macro so you can do it for yourself and, and have that process just placed into anything that you do it, or you just keep this file as like say a template, keep that typeface in there, and then just throw that in there. Or you can also put add other things. You can do it to shapes, or you can do it to images. Play around with it, see how it works, have some fun, and then make some stuff with that. I'm actually starting to run out of t-shirts. I had to get rid of a bunch, so I may just turn this into a t-shirt. Give me a comment below and I'll do it. While you're headed down there, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Hit the bell, because you never want to miss a thing. If you want to see me do this one in Affinity Designer, you know what to do. All right, guys, I'm going to get out. Remember, be good today, be even better tomorrow. See ya.